We here at the Sports History Network proudly partner with 26 podcasts, all revolving around the history of sports. But did you know that many of our hosts were sports history authors way before they started their shows? It's true. We've got Joe Ziemba, host of When Football Was Football. Joe Zagurski, host of Pro Football in the 1970s. Mark Morthier, host of Yesterday Sports. Tommy Phillips, host of Lombardi Memories. And Scott Adamson, co-host of From the 55-Yard Line. All these authors have many books for you to choose from. To check them out, go to our website at sportshistorynetwork.com slash sportshistorybooks. Pick up your copy today! Soundtrack provided by Kevin McLeod of filmmusic.io. Jump and Joe Savoldi had all the potential in the world to be a lo- great, long-lasting pro football player. However, his collegiate and pro football careers were each cut short for a couple of very interesting reasons. We're going to go over these and study the career of Joe Savoldi in just a moment. This is the Pigskin Daily History Dispatch, a podcast that covers the anniversaries of American football events throughout history on a day-to-day basis. Your host, Darren Hayes, is podcasting from America's North Shore to bring you the memories of the gridiron one day at a time. So as we come out of the tunnel of the Sports History Network, let's take the field and go no huddle through the portal of positive gridiron history with pigskindispatch.com. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. Hello, my football friends. This is Darren Hayes of PigskinDispatch.com. Welcome once again to the Pig Pen, your portal to positive football history. And you know, it's a rare time when a player only has a handful of games in the NFL, but has a pretty interesting story to hear about them. Now, Joe Savoldi is one of those rare individuals that does, and he has a short tale that comes from the 1930 NFL season. But before we get to that, we need to talk about the background of Joe becoming a professional football player and talk about his younger years. He was born in Castano Primo, Italy on March 5th, 1908 as Giuseppe Savoldi was his formal name and his family immigrated to America around 1920. He was amazed with the culture of the U.S. and soon gravitated to athletics, including football. Giuseppe soon turned towards the English version of his first name, of Joe, and became a star athlete in high school. After four years at Three Oaks High School, he enrolled at the University of Notre Dame, where beginning in 1928, he would play football for the legendary coach, Newt Rockney, and his highly touted Fighting Irish football team. Joe is often remembered with the monikers of Galloping Joe or Jumping Joe as he earned this nickname for a play he made in a 1929 game against Carnegie Tech when he scored a touchdown with a leaping jump across the goal line, a novel move at that time. Other career highlights for Savoldi came in on October 4, 1930 when he scored the first ever Notre Dame touchdown at the newly opened Notre Dame Stadium and a week later when he scored three touchdowns against a tough Navy squad. Well, in November of 1930, his fighting Irish career came to an abrupt end when his secret marriage, a big no-no at the school in that era, leaked out when he filed for divorce. George Hallis of the Chicago Bears wasted no time when he found out about the talented fullback was available, so he signed him to a contract right away. Heck, Hallis found Savoldi so valuable that he even paid the $1,000 fine that NFL president Joe Carr imposed on the Bears for signing a college player before that person's class had graduated from school. It didn't work out, though, for the Bears in their favor, though, as Savoldi played only three games in Chicago. Savoldi had quit the team when his offensive teammates had stopped blocking for him. The reason that is given uh, his contract, was what he told reporters later on in life, is that his contract was worth between $500 and $4,000 per game because he got a cut of the gate receipts. And those blocking for him, well, they averaged a meager salary of $50 to $125 a game. You see a big disparity there. And so did his blockers. So they said, hey, we're not blocking for him. You're so good. You can make so much more money than the rest of us all put together. Well, run by yourself. Didn't work out so well. So he sat the bench for a while and uh, eventually quit. 
uh, Jumping Joe ended up changing sports and entered the lucrative arena of professional wrestling where he became a star. He tangled in many big matches across the world and is even at the heart of some big grappling dramatic storylines when he helped to double cross the heavyweight champ at one point. His famous move was the flying drop kick, and it became an almost synonymous with Savoldi as he won many matches uh, with his signature move. And today it's still used, and it's, only not, it's not called the flying drop kick anymore. Now it's called just the drop kick. It's a shame that we never got to witness the full potential of Joe Savoldi on the gridiron, as both his pro and college careers were shortened for some very interesting reasons. And that's our very interesting football story of the day. Hope you enjoyed this little bit of history. You can catch more at pigskindispatch.com and go to sportshistorynumbers.com where all my friends there are talking about some great sports history. Every single day we have thousands of hours of great podcasting and reading enjoyment for any age sports fan to learn a little bit more about the games they love. So till tomorrow, everybody, have a great gridiron day. That's all the football history we have today, folks. Join us back tomorrow for more of your football history. We invite you to check out our website, pigskindispatch.com, not only to see the daily football history, but to experience positive football with our many articles on the good people of the game, as well as our own football comic strip, Cleet Marks Comics. Pigskindispatch.com is also on social media outlets, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and don't forget the Pigskin Dispatch YouTube channel to get all of your positive football news and history. Special thanks to the talents of Mike and Gene Monroe, as well as Jason Neff for letting us use their music during our podcast. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. At the Sports History Network, we're all about sports yesteryear, and so we're so pleased to introduce you to Row One, an online memorabilia gallery and shop that brings your sports history to life anywhere. The Row One Gallery includes over 5,200 gorgeously reproduced prints of team posters, game program covers, game tickets, advertisements, and more in baseball, pro and college football, pro and college basketball, and more. And any gallery item may be printed in a variety of sizes on wood, metal, canvas, acrylic, or poster paper. And in Row One Shop, check out the thousands more of unique Unique items with a retro and historical designs dating back to 1876, including t-shirts, long sleeve shirts, phone cases, mugs, blankets, pillows, towels, and even shower curtains. Go to sportshistorynetwork.com, R-O-W number one, for access to the full Row One catalog and for gallery prints and gift items. Plus, get a 15% discount off all prints on the Row One Pictorum Gallery with coupon code SHN15. Follow the link on the show notes.